Andy Whiteley if we are free sovereign beings, why do we ask for permission? Sovereignty is a concept fundamental to our freedom. Without individual sovereignty, we are merely slaves. Without true independence, we may only walk someone else's path. As humanity continues to wake up to our true nature of being, to our divine relationship with our world and unbroken connection to the source of life, it is crucial that we truly understand what it is to be a sovereign being. To begin, let's look at the definition of the word sovereign so we all start on the same page. The Oxford Dictionary defines sovereign as Sovereign slash SVRN, adjective Acting or done independently and without outside interference Possessing supreme or ultimate power So in considering our sovereignty, the question really is Do we truly live independently and without outside interference? Do we possess supreme or ultimate power over our lives? And if not, who does? Sovereigns and subjects How often do we hear the terms sovereign nation, sovereign state, sovereign debt or the sovereign monarch? Despite its definition, today, we attribute the value of sovereignty only to institutions, to nations and monarchs. So consider. If a monarch is sovereign and there is only one monarch, there can be only one sovereign only one who acts independently and without outside interference. What about the rest of us? Don't monarchs have subjects? Subject to what, you may wonder? Subject to outside interference, from those possessing supreme or ultimate power. Let's examine the word subject for a moment. Subject slash SBDKT, noun. An individual subjected to the rule by an elite, see feudalism. Derived from the Latin word subictus, meaning lying beneath. When we attribute sovereignty only to institutions, to nations, or monarchs, we cannot also consider ourselves sovereign. Instead we are merely subjects. When we consider ourselves as subjects, we assume the role of slaves, lying beneath others, unable to act independently and free of outside interference. Is this really how we are willing to live? If natural forces created life and humanity, and humanity created institutions, should institutions such as government not remain the instrument of humanity, and not the other way around? We humans, like all living beings, are living breathing creations of spirit or God force whomever or whatever that force is. We are a part of the divine creation of life. Interconnected and multidimensional, we are an expression of life itself. And we were born to this abundant and fertile planet, and indeed born to this fascinating universe, simply to live to enjoy it, feed from it, share in its abundance, and live as a conscious part of its wondrous mechanics. So if a government institution assumes the authority to prescribe our rights, and to limit the manner in which we may enjoy and live and share and feed, does government not infringe on our birthright our relationship with our natural world? Does it not assume authorship of nature's creation? The government trust relationship. When the concept of government was created by humanity, it was created with a specific purpose, service delivery. To serve the specific needs of the community. Government was effectively entrusted with returning benefits to the people, as trustees to our needs as a society. This relationship can be viewed as follows. You government you trust. Let's call this the government trust. Under this model, government acts for and on behalf of the people. Your rights are inherent, based upon who and what you are as a living human being. The rules and objectives of government were established by the people, and government adopted those objectives on behalf of the people. However the behavior of those claiming to be government today is in complete contrast with this trust agreement. Today's government acts as executor and beneficiary of this arrangement. Government trust too. Let's call this the dictatorship trust. In this model, government possesses supreme or ultimate power and assumes the role of sovereign, and you act as a legal entity a creation of the government. Under this model, government dictates the rules and objectives, and prescribes your rights and obligations. You are merely a trustee, employed to return benefits to government as the sole beneficiary of the arrangement. Contrast the two trust diagrams above. Are you considered a free sovereign being under our current model of government? Or a regulated trustee to the priorities of government? Now consider the situation a step further. If you are not sovereign under the current model of government, and your government is claiming executor and beneficiary status over you and your community, isn't your government an imposter? Undemocratic. A dictatorship? Committing treason? Self-determination or dictatorship? Life, liberty, and property do not exist because men have made laws. On the contrary. 
it was the fact that life, liberty, and property existed beforehand that caused men to make laws in the first place. Frederick Bastiat, liberal theorist, political economist and member of the French Assembly, 1801-1850. In our heavily regulated society today, who really possesses the supreme or ultimate power over our lives? Are we living lives of self-determination? Why does our system of government never really seem to serve us, no matter which way we vote? Are we bound to avail dictatorship in which opportunities are limited, debt is imposed, public thinking is manipulated, commerce is protected, and humans are regulated? Look around. I think you already know the answer. We are not regarded as sovereign beings by today's government. It does not operate as our trustee, serving the will of the people. Instead it presumes to regulate, to grant us our rights. And it does so for the benefit of a small number of elite family empires, who operate behind a veil of secrecy and deceit staggeringly, under the guise of democracy. Now let's consider for a moment the paradigm under which we are regulated. If we allow our rights to be granted by government, don't we assume the role of a slave of one who is born without rights? If we allow government to grant us our rights, can't they be withheld by government just as easily? Does that not leave us beholden to government as the highest power on the planet? What happened to our inalienable rights? The intended role of government is to uphold the rights of the people, not to provide them. And in reality, a genuine democratic government can only grant privileges, not rights. A privilege is a special entitlement to immunity granted by the state or another authority. In modern democratic states, a privilege is conditional and granted only after birth. By contrast, a right is an inherent, irrevocable entitlement held by all citizens or all human beings from the moment of birth Susanna McNichol, The Law of Privilege, 1st edition 1992. As living beings of Gaia, it is our right to freely enjoy of her abundance. By allowing government to insert privileges in place of our inalienable rights, we grant government the right to assume a level of authority so superior that it may withhold access to our natural human rights, and limit our experience of Gaia and of creation itself. We have already established that such authority was never meant to be the purpose of true democratic government. So what is behind this emerging trend? Is it for our own protection, as government would have us believe? And if so, from what? For your own protection. Let's call a spade a spade. The ongoing erosion of our natural human rights in favor of the rights of corporate and governmental institutions is being intentionally perpetrated by an imposter government under the guise of our own protection. Many of the perceived threats from which we are being protected by increasing regulation didn't even exist until power-seeking governments and shadow governments created them, just to get the ball rolling in their direction. The war on terror is a perfect example. It was their first big move toward instigating a military revolution. The intention of the, the United States government was always to declare war. Several in fact. And, employing Hegelian dialectic manipulation, they convinced the people of America and indeed the Western world to support it as a solution to the problem they created. Its strategy was to take military control of foreign countries rich in natural and political resources, while creating a culture of fear and militarism under which government could assume increased powers to monitor and control human activity, both inside and outside its borders. It created an outside terrorist threat in the minds of the Western world through the media staging of 9-11-2001, the world's most public terrorist attack, one immediately attributed to Mideast extremism before the dust had even settled. Scared rigid intentionally so the people perceived a problem and demanded a solution. And thus war was declared. For our own protection. The war mentality that was subsequently embedded in the psyches of the general population create the perfect climate for the gradual introduction of tighter governmental control over populations and minds, in the, the United States and overseas, and over the natural resources of foreign lands and all while providing untold financial gain to the, the United States government and its corporate cohorts. Enter the Patriot Act in the, the United States, and comparable laws in Australia and other countries, and exit your individual human rights for your own protection. Don't be fooled this was no accident. Nor was it an isolated incident. The Hegelian dialectic has long been used by governments to manipulate public thinking toward predetermined ends. And it rarely fails unless you know they're doing it. And now you know. Seeking permission. Dictating how we live was never meant as the purpose of democratic government. Nor was manipulating the psyche of a society to support its own veiled agenda. Surely that is the realm of dictatorship. But as beings, many of us struggle with the concept of governing ourselves. Many do not even consider it possible. 
and this is largely due to the conditioning of our current power structure that of beneficial government. It is a new kind of dictatorship, one that operates in shadows, by manipulating and undermining our sense of value, by pretending to be a democracy. So without question, we hand over our natural rights to others the right to be the authors of our own lives on earth we seek permission from an external authority, believing we are giving ourselves to the oneness of society. But increasingly, we as individuals are not benefiting from this arrangement. Our sovereign rights are being infringed upon, and the reality of our world is moving further away from our shared utopia despite our potential. It is no wonder that, today, many of us are now forced to stand up to institutions and their representatives, and assert our inherent human rights. The divine right of humanity. The right to determine the shape of our own lives. And it can be no other way. The energy of Gaia has started to shift, and upheaval can be felt on a micro-macrocosmic level. We have no option but to change with this energy. It demands that each of us begins to live in alignment with our own natural instincts independently and without outside interference and with the earth who sustains us. The source of our rights. For many of us, the first challenge we face today is deconstructing the psyche of seeking permission. And the first step is to understand the source of our rights, or privileges as they may be. How often do we cite an external authority as the origin of our rights, as if those rights were granted to us by a document or an institution. It's my First Amendment right to. I have the right under the Constitution to. Who granted you those rights? Are they inherent? Or are they granted at the discretion of an outside authority? Now contrast this mindset to the statement I have the right to, where the protection of that right is simply guaranteed by the Constitution or law. Which statement most reflects the mindset of a society in which government genuinely upholds the rights of its people? If the real function of government is to uphold our natural rights, isn't a government that presumes to grant your rights an imposter? How can power be held by an institution of human creation and yet exercised over humans as a superior authority? Surely any supposedly democratic government that presumes such a right over its people its subjects is overstepping the bounds of its authority. It's time we adopt a new mindset. Authority or sovereignty? The current debate in Australia over Aboriginal recognition truly exemplifies our struggle with the concept of sovereignty under our current paradigm. Politically packaged as a rights campaign, in essence, the Australian government is seeking the consent of the original tribal people to submit to the power of the Commonwealth, to allow their rights to freely use land and water and sky to be provided, and just as easily withdrawn, by government. Instead of consenting to have their privileges prescribed by Commonwealth law, Many original tribal people are redeclaring their unbroken sovereign rights as the original custodians of the land. Objecting to the concept of being regulated as traditional owners under Commonwealth law, they simply want their natural sovereignty recognized and protected and actually upheld and many are taking legal steps to reassert their right to live unimpeded under original tribal law. The difference between these two positions is a distinct illustration of the power struggle between the beneficial government paradigm and the human beings who are demanding better. But in reality, the legal battle between the Commonwealth and the original tribal people is unique. The fight for recognition of sovereignty has been an ongoing battle for the original people for centuries, for the rest of our society, the question of sovereignty is rarely even scrutinized. I am often asked by Wake Up World readers. How do I go about becoming a sovereign being? What's the right way to go about declaring sovereignty? Or in other words, what paperwork do I need to sign to be freed? To them I usually ask. Are you seeking someone else's consent to be free? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? Who has the authority to give you permission to think and act independently? By definition, doesn't sovereignty come from within, not without? If you are waiting for your freedom to be handed to you, think again. Sovereignty starts with you. You choose sovereignty for yourself, to feel sovereign, to think sovereign, to live sovereign, to be sovereign. But for most of us today, sadly, the idea of embodying sovereignty is a total paradigm shift. By recognizing the authority of government, we consent to its standing between ourselves and our true nature. When we decide not to be dictated to, individually and as a society, the game simply ceases. No person or institution created by another can assert its power or authority over us, unless we choose to play along. We have the right to just say enough. No more. And they know it. So forgive the deceit and move on with a sense of freedom and love. Attune to the relationship between you and the universe around you, and acknowledge it as the single authority in your life your true nature. Be the executor and beneficiary of your short time on Gaia.
allow your actions and interactions to be guided by the light of conscience and consciousness. And don't be afraid to share it with others. Once you make that internal realization and truly embrace your natural sovereignty, your outer world will begin to change with you. With all of us. Be fearless. You are not alone. Asserting your sovereignty. Of course, I encourage you as a sovereign being to do your own homework and reach your own conclusions about how best to integrate this mindset into your life. But here I will offer some thoughts from my own experience and research in hopes they may resonate for you, or activate an idea. In declaring your sovereignty, perhaps the best starting point is the determination of your rights. Government is the creation of human beings. It cannot dictate to another human being unless said human agrees to play along. That is our natural right. If and when you consent to interact within the system of government, you consent to being bound by its rules and limitations as well as enjoy its limited benefits. But as a trustee, this inevitably works against you the system is not set up to benefit you. You are a trustee to the aspirations of beneficial government. You will always be required to give more than you take. And that understanding is the key. You give the system energy. Without you and your energy, the system is nothing. Your power is in your being. Do you consent to play? Or will you simply go about your life, giving as you receive, and adhering to the universal laws do no harm, cause no loss? By withholding your consent to interact with the system, and maintaining sovereignty in your mind heart and spirit, you assert the highest authority in that interaction. Understand that those claiming government status rely on your consent to apply the legal system to your being. So before engaging with any unwanted approach with those claiming government status, take control of the conversation. How do you do that? By being the person asking the questions. Why are they asking for you to identify yourself with your full name, your identity as a legal entity? Are they trying to establish a contract with you? Are they seeking your consent to be regulated by them? As a legal entity? What are your rights and responsibilities if you choose to engage in that interaction? Can those rights and associated responsibilities be enforced if I simply identify myself as a living being? and refuse to acknowledge that I understand my rights as prescribed by government? Any government agent that claims to grant or deny your natural rights, instead of protecting them, clearly demonstrates which trust they uphold, the dictatorship trust. So take the lead and ask them to identify themselves not by showing you a shiny badge or letterhead, but by truly identifying their role and intent. And ask them to identify the entity they are trying to engage the human being or the legal entity. Once that is established, you can then respond accordingly by withholding your consent to create a contract with them, and outlining the terms under which you will engage them further. Tell them you understand your natural rights and don't accept the terms of the contract they are offering you. And watch the game change. Such dealings with beneficial government may not always end well but revolutions aren't pretty. They're just necessary. And the time is now. Our natural rights. Today's imposter governments thrive on the word of law, yet their actions contradict the spirit in which their laws were written, and encroach on the rights those laws are meant to protect. Too often, governments use modern legal systems as a tool to legitimize unlawful and unethical acts, while the expense of legal action and the complexity of legal language, legalese, is exclusive, allowing only those within the system any real access to it. But that system is a fiction. Regardless of what it says on government paper, or the emerging totalitarian culture it embodies, we have natural rights. We have the right to live freely, independently, and without outside interference. To think and move and be. To enjoy all of Gaia's fruits. That is the natural law of Gaia. Government cannot give you that right, nor can it take that right away unless you choose to allow it. Rocking the establishment boat can take bravery we have been trained our whole lives to respect the supreme authority of government and the mechanisms it imposes. But as universal beings, we are not bound to the authority of a man-made government, genuine, imposter or otherwise. Your identity as a living being gives you supreme authority over your own life. Simple. The last word. I will finish with the words of the United States founding father and principal author of the Declaration of Independence, 1776, Thomas Jefferson, who beautifully described each person's inherent right to unobstructed action according to our will within limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others Thomas Jefferson. As a sovereign being, your rights are to do whatever you please, limited only by the equal right of others to do whatever they please. Your freedom is your divine right as a living breathing being. It is up to you what you do with that freedom. 
and anyone who tells you otherwise is probably trying to control you.